We are here in the Spiritist Center named Mei Mei, founded by Chico Xavier in July 1952. So we are celebrating this year, 70 years of work in this house. And it's a legacy that Chico Xavier and his friends left for everyone. We are going to have a chat here in the second world meeting of Jesus' friends with Chico Xavier and his legacy. We are also hosting the national meeting of G uh, Chico Xavier friends. So we gathered some people here with us. They lived with Chico Xavier and they are sharing with us these stories, these accounts, and also what they learned from living with Chico Xavier. They are going to enlighten us, our gathering, and the theme of this meeting is time to heal with Chico Xavier. So let me present our guests. Mrs. Dalva is the first person. Lucila, she is the daughter of the major, and she's the niece of Arnaldo Rocha and Mei Mei. We also have Ana Maria Machado, Naninha. She's the sister of Zeca Machado. Zeca Machado founded Shiva Group. We also have Barbara and Valeska from Shiva Group. And they have many interesting stories to share with us. We also have Marta Xavier. She is daughter-in-law of Jose Xavier, who is Chico Xavier's brother. And she is married to our belated Renault. And we also have Jose Estacio Machado. He's the son of Zeca Machado that we have already said that he is Ananinha's brother. We are sure that our friends are here, both in the material world, world and in the upper world. So let's start talking with Mrs. Mar Marta. She lived with Chico. She is married to Chico Xavier's nephew. So she lived intimately with Chico Xavier. What can you share with us? Oh, this is it. Chico visited my house a lot. Especially after I had my children, he would like to play with the children a lot and he would like to uh, to play with them he would he would uh, uh, tell us many stories and jokes as well he liked to play a lot when he moved to Beraba in Minas Gerais in the southeast of Brazil we were anxious, waiting for him to visit, especially the children, because she she used to to pay some allowances for the children. They liked that very much. In the day that it was coming, they were super anxious. They were anxious, waiting for them. He used to go to the Lucila's house very early in the morning. He would go for a walk. He would say hi for everyone. He greeted everyone he saw. He was love impersonated. Chico is all of that, a very, very good person. Having another person as him we are not going to have. He's the only one. Yeah, I agree. He's the only one. We are not going to have another person like him. There are many mediums that are very good, but as Chico, we are not going to have another one. Yes, we are not going to have another person. Yes, Jenny, your daughter-in-law, was with them a lot, right? 
Yes, Sh Chico was absent in one session, and your daughter-in-law never missed one of them. Yes, she never missed any of the sessions here. Mrs. Martha, you lived until today in the first place where they had sessions. Yes, in the room where I sleep, they had sessions. And that room is very blessed room. This Spiritist Center, Luis Gonzaga Spiritist Center, had many places, but that was the first one, and it is a place that I live until now. Yes, we have many records of Chico Xavier receiving people in that house, right? Yes, this is it. I wasn't married to Renault at that time, but I would go to Jenny's house a lot at that time. There were many plants there, and I would pick up the flowers and decorate the table. It's, it was a big table as this one, but it was a very simple one and very old as well. But she used to decorate the table with flowers. Yes, she received the people very tenderly, right? Yeah, this is it. I'm very happy to have you here with us. Mrs. Martha, yeah, I, I would go to the Spiritist Center and he would go there to clean the house as well. Yes, we see that he was there and Jenny was there a lot also. Yeah, she, she was there since the beginning, right? Thank you so much. We are going to talk to Barbara now. Barbara have some st has some stories to share with us. Since her great grandmother, tell us about this story, Barbara. Oh, this is a very nice story. My great grandmother, she used to tell us this story a lot. She was the midwife of Chico Javier's ma uh, mother. She's the one that delivered Chico in this world and when his mother died died in her arms she lived in front of chico's house and it's in front of luis gonzaga spiritist center i remember that a lot because i was too young and i didn't know anything from life we are so naive at this time. I used to sleep with my grand-grandmother. She passed away. She was 105 years old. So I used to sleep with my great-grandmother. And I saw at that time Chico Xavier going to the house and depositing some money for her so that she could play the lottery. She loved to play the lottery. And she used to play the lottery in the morning and the evening. So every time he left the spiritist house, he would go there and give her money so that she could play the lottery. So this was a wonderful opportunity to see Chico Xavier. But I was so young. I didn't cherish this moment at that time. Eliana Machado, at that time, when Chico moved to Beraba, Eliana and I would go to the retirement house so that we could see Chico there. We could see Chico deliver their psychographies. And he called her, he called Eliana to talk to him. She was a great medium. She was Zeca Machado's daughter. She had a very strong accent. Chico didn't go to Pedro Leopoldo at that time, the city. And then we went to Uberaba. And a month before he disincarnated, me, Joe, and Arlete, we were there talking to him. He didn't talk much at that time. He was too old. But we went there, and that was the last time I talked to him. But we miss him a lot. 
But I don't know. But she calls a dress here in Pedro Leopoldo after he left Lucy's house, Lucinda's house. That, that street is named after my grandfather, Pedro José da Silva, Pedro 50, also known as Pedro 50. So we have sweet memory for our beloved Chico Xavier. These are great memories that we are never going to delete of our minds. Uh, when we talk about being a child, we saw Chico Xavier as an uncle. He was neighbor of Dahlia, and we saw Chico at that time, and we were kids. He was the brother of someone that we loved. I remember when I was a, a kid, the Mother Day's parties, and also in the uh, Christmas, where the, he was always present. And when we became teenagers, we would get in touch with his legacy. And we see how great Chico Xavier is. And we need to preserve these memories. Yes, this is it. And I remember the Christmas when we were at Luis Gonzaga Spiritist Center. Because my family is Catholic. All of my families, they are Catholics. I'm the only Spiritist one. But we couldn't enter Luis Gonzaga Spiritist Center because my Catholic family didn't allow me to do so. So we couldn't mix it because if we enter the Spiritist Center, the priest would see it and we weren't allowed to do so. And there's something very funny. My great grandmother, she would call Chico Xavier in the grocery store and she asked them, the owner of the grocery store to let Chico go to her house to read some letters. But this is not accurate. He, she didn't tell the story. She would like Chico to go there to give him uh, delicacies. They knew he had a hard time because he didn't have a lot, uh, m uh, much money. So they would like to give him treats delicacies they cooked because they were excellent cooks. Yeah, he liked to eat a lot, especially sweets. This is it, Barbara. Thank you so much. Naninha, now it's your turn to tell your stories. She has very many interesting stories since her childhood with Zeca Machado. Uh, then other nice stories in her teen years and afterwards when she, she grew older and became an adult. She has very interesting stories to share. Yeah, this is it. In fact, at that time, Pedro Leopoldo, the town, it was like a village, too small. And Catholic religion was, was the, the greatest religion people had. We were, we were raised as Catholics, and my father would go to the Spiritist, Spiritist Center with Chico Xavier, and I was divided because I, I heard the the priest saying that the spiritists would go to hell. And I knew the spiritist people I, I met didn't go to hell because they were too good of people. And people in my school would say, Chico Xavier has an ether in his in his pocket, and when he would go to have a session, he would open that that pack to spread the ether smell there. My father got sick, and the house where we lived was similar with the house of a farm. It was a very big house. We are very tall ceiling, and Chico Xavier went to my house to visit my, my sick father. He was lying down, he didn't open his eyes, and I sat down near the door, and I paid attention to see Chico to see if he would pick up the ether from his pocket. And he was up, 
and he applied the energy and my house was filled with ether but he didn't pick up any any containers with ether and I was too too interested in that he was applying a pass I didn't see any ether in his hands and that smell was there and I was super curious about that and this was a very uh, uh, important moment in my life and after the pass finished with the energy he applied to my father my father had his pajamas wet the ether was the smell of ether was very very strong in the room and my father got healed and later many years later my father passed away and she could send a letter to my mother and in this letter he talked about he wrote about the experiences he had with my father back then what year did your father pass away it was 1964 that was super interesting because at that time let me tell you what happened it's important to say at that time there was a strong politics against Chico Xavier and the Spiritist doctrine and when my father passed away my older brother was Catholic and the priest offered help they had a memorial and the coffin would go from the house until the cemetery passing through the church and they asked me what my father demanded us to do when he passed away and he asked us to bury him as a spiritist person and I wrote a letter to Chico Xavier when I was going to get married and I would like to get married as a spiritist that I was and I asked Chico Xavier for some guidance so she wrote me a very beautiful letter and in his letter with his nice words his nice manner to speak he said this Inside the Spiritist Center, we shouldn't introduce ceremonies or rites because we didn't want to deviate people's attentions. Because he had seen some, mer some weddings with family and friends inside of the person's house or at a club. And at that time, he couldn't take part in my ceremony because he was traveling he was traveling abroad so he referred Peralva to me and it was the first spiritist wedding in Pedro Leopoldo the town and people asked me aren't you going to get married in the church at church what if he leaves you and I, I used to reply to people, if he doesn't want to live with me, he will live and I will continue living my life. And people realized other things. And I, I think religion should respect other religions. But at that time, it was important that my father passed away according to, to his convictions and I should get married to my convictions and Chico guided me very well yes I think we should keep a respect by other religions but we should keep our beliefs we cannot deny things we believe and things we say so your experience was very rich one and these examples these stories, these people that work with Chico, they tell us very valuable things. Yeah, this is it. And when he would go to my house to have a snack in the afternoon, 
my mother was very catholic person and when they went to my house they had some cards some catholic cards and they wrote uh, nice things for my mother so they respected her religion a lot yes nowadays people people mix things everything Chico did was on the Christian faith and he respected everyone's faith regardless of the religion and he respected what people chose to do and this is beautiful thank you Naninha very very much and let's remember the topic of our conversation time to heal with Chico Xavier and the work, his legacy is very important and what he did with your father. Because back then he healed your father and your father could live more, many more years and he passed away afterwards of other problems. Very good. Thank you so much. Now let's talk to Donna Dalva, Mrs. Dalva. She comes to our house. She has many stories with Chico since her childhood, teen, and as an adult as well. Yes, excuse me, Eugenio. Let me compliment what Naninha talked about her wedding because I also had a very rich experience with that regards. I have been a spiritist also, and I also had a Catholic family super Catholic family and my father was worried with that when he my father was worried when I was going to get married my father didn't want me to get married at church but he was um, worried with me cutting relations with other people because of that so Chico Xavier talked to my father and said, said, we are not going to give children things they cannot deal with. It's not going to make difference. Let her get married whatever she wants. And my mother-in-law, she would ask me if she could leave my, my children to the mess. And I let her do that. And by doing so, so, years passed by and Armando came here, went to Uberaba, read all of Chico's books. So he, he went to Uberaba, he read all Chico's books, so he could digest what he heard a lot. Chico's wisdom was enormous. And having this tolerance with other religions, whatever the religions are, we have to respect because everything that have Christ's name is sacred. And our goal is only one. The goal of all the religions is only one. We need to have Christ in our hearts. Mrs. Ra Dalva is son of Mr. Rosham. It's my friend that received me in this house. And he's Arnaldo's brother. They have worked with Chico and May May. And Mr. Rocha, which is the major, that we call him major. He was a friend of Chico before Arnaldo. Arnaldo was an atheist at that time. And it's interesting how Geraldo, the major, met Chico and the work they did throughout their lives. Dona Dalva is going to call her to talk to us about it. The first time my father and Chico met was in Minas, Minas Gerais, is in the southeast of Brazil. They lived next to see. Cissa Pereira and he asked Mr. Cicero to open the session. Yes, the first time my father met Chico was in Unión Espírita Mineira. 
My father had just got married. He lived in a house in the back of Mr. Cicero Pereira and Mrs. Gilmar. Then he asked my father to open the session. So he started uh, praying. And when he was praying Caritas prayer, our soul was touched. Then Chico was set down in that table. And he asked, where did I hear this voice before? And Emmanuel, his mentor, said, this voice comes from long time ago. And my father looked for it, talked to Chico, and a beautiful friendship has started. Every Monday morning, Chico went to my house. We sat down, had coffee. Afterwards, we went to a session in the Spiritist session. And I was a teenager, and I came to Pedro Leopoldo. Every week we were there. And then I was invited to be in the session. I was 15 years old at that time, and 70 years had passed. We were there with Chico. It was such a special thing in the smallest details. Tolerance. What he told us about tolerance, session, complicity with people, fraternity as well. This is something we can never forget. Let clarify. Miss Dalva was the first one to take part in May May. She wrote letters inviting to go to Paqueta Island. She was on vacation. Yes, I was living on Miss Ida's house. Yes, and she invited. And what was the set, the answer? I can't go, but you can come here to work with us. He mentioned this letter. And he said the sessions were going to start, and they accepted her help. And you went there, right? Yes, I, I was in the sessions. I took part in the sessions a long time. Afterwards, things were different, but I am always connected to this wonderful work. My father, my uncle, and... My biggest, my biggest guiding, my bi biggest guide was Chico. What a girl the age I was could think of. Yes, you had the richest experience in materializing sessions. A few people were so happy to take part. Yes, Zé Eustáquio participated in these materialization sessions. He will talk about it later. How was your experience in these sessions? I, have, I took part in only one session. I think it was in Andre's house where the sessions happened. Chico lied down and we would see a something that was similar to a column of cotton. It was something white, and the spirit was materialized. It was incredible. It was super, super real. I saw Sheila's spirit. It was a, an image from the First World War. She was dressed in white, and there were some things around her. And when she was near my mother, she had a kind of lantern with her. And she got this lantern and put next to my mother's breasts. And there were some fires. So she passed near everyone, and then my grandmother, the mother of my father, she was materialized. 
when my father got his first job, he bought a coat for my grandma. And she was she was biting smokes. And when this spirit was materialized before my father, she got my father's hand and got a small box with that smoke, with that material, in the, in the coat he gave her. I will never forget this. This is something very material. If you didn't believe that before, you would believe at that time. And then we saw some roses. The roses went through the walls and went to the people in that session labs. I, I remember this perfectly. It was a super rich experience. When the session finished, it was dawn, super cold in the city of Pedro Leopoldo. And then Chico told us he went through an astral trip with Emmanuel. And when they left the, the earth, he saw the super blue of the planet. And when the astronaut said he saw the earth as being super blue, I already knew because Chico told us on his astral trip. And these materialization sessions, I remember your father being super emotional talking about it. And Arnaldo as well talked about May May being materialized. She saw as a light in the corridor. And the hair was there. And this is an experience that, unfortunately, we didn't see it, but this account conform the beauty of these phenomena according to the requests of Emmanuel. Only the privileged people could see it. You were the privileged ones. <laughs> but this is such an, uh, an interesting experience. Yes, it was super rich experience. I can imagine you were so young with this such profound experiences. Yes, I was super young at that time. Thank you, Ms. Dalva. Yes, I thank the spirituality who permitted being this exchange of love and beauty with the spirits. Praise God. God be praised. And we hope this house can be this path of light and we should look for these in the Jesus Christ. Yes, we are doing this gathering today so that we can have these experiences full of value and such simplicity, this robust faith that permitted this gathering of friends to have this intimate contact with the higher grounds. And Estachio, since a small child, being a teenager and an adult, yet yeah, no one here has age. But we see that everyone had their first encounters with the spirituality since a small age. They were young children, so they are precocious. Today we talk about the children being precocious. No, you were precocious when you were small time. Children, I mean. Jose Stacchio, your father was an intimate friend of Chico. Talk, talk about it. Yes, I would like to start complimenting what they were talking about, our mother. Our mother was a Catholic, and she wanted all of us to be in the first Mass of Sunday. All city were there, and we should be there as well. My Uh, my sister was there also, and we were playing at that time. And I would see Chico Xavier kneel down in the first bench. 
with a both his both sides were empty and then I knew that he wasn't going to church because of reasons that we thought best not to tell. But what I always remember is that he was kneeled down the 60 minutes of the Mass and he was praying the whole time. This was the first view, vision, the first vision I had. And the second time I saw it, it was in Lindolfo's house. He lived with Lindolfo. His house was still being built. Uh, Lindolfo was his brother-in-law. Yes. Mr. João, Chico's father, was at the door and he would give us a candy. And I was sitting down in the kitchen with Luisa, she gave me cake, coffee, and Chico talked to my father in the living room. And I used to listen to their conversation. And when they were talking, I was near them, and I was paying close attention. Because when I was a small child, I couldn't listen to the whistle in the factory, and I couldn't hear for uh, bombs. When I listened to that, I went to under my bed, and I cried a lot. And then I, I heard Chico saying that I took part in the First World War, and I died there. And Sheila also died at that time. This is what Chico told. And when time passed, I could see moments of that time when I was incarnated there. I can see myself running, and I saw pictures in Hamburg during the First World War as if I were there. Yes, this is a reminiscence, a strong reminiscence, right? Yes, this is it. And this was the first time I got in touch with Chico. But uh, my mom said that she was afraid because I was a spiritist and she was Catholic. She thought it was a, a, a devil thing. And afterwards, here, the ho our house here was... It started in 1952, and Chico's house was being built then. And my father said that he would build something with May May here. And this was before 52. I was two years old. Yes, uh, this was 48. Yes, in 48, 49, 50, I was at Chico's house. I was four years old at that time. Afterwards, Chico started his peregrination. From my house, it was my father, myself. We would go to Jacques' bakery. We got a bread, a pack of 50 bread. My father got one pack and I got another one. We went to Chico's house. So, Chico, my father, myself were there. Nelsis Bompato was there as well, and Alberto Denise. This is how it started. Ah, you were distributing bread. There wasn't a line. People would go to people's house to distribute bread. And he also would go to places without access. People who were under the bridge, who were in the forest, and he were very careful. He would pick up the bread and put in the people's hands until my uncle João separated the money, put into an envelope, and would pass it under a code. So lemonade was one uh, code. 
and other kinds of juice and go on and so forth. According to the need, they would pick up the envelope. Yes. So we went to Chico's house. We went through a certain place and we passed to different places. Valeria was there as well. I was present. Ah, you were present. The Chico's story is, in, is very emotional. Yes, I think. I saw Chico crying, and he was talking about Hebe's interview. I was there. This didn't happen only one time. Every Saturday we went there, and she was talking about Jesus. Please, Valeria, talk about Jesus. And one day she said, and this is interesting, this Valeria case. I was in Chico's house and someone hugged me because she was emotional, because she, she met a nephew of her. And this was super interesting because you were going to tell these stories. Ah, and you saw it, right? Yes, I saw it. And this is the story of what we used to do and this peregrination we finished at the hospital if you don't know the town of pedro leopoldo chico went on foot to one end to another end of the town to help people yes i was super tired when it finished and we finished in the andre's house as she told and this didn't happen one time. He, he went to everyone providing a pass. And then we felt this smell of eater, as she told before. And something ran as if it was water. And people on the outside didn't understand. They would like to know how Chico did that. But it wasn't Chico. It was Sheila. Sheila's spirit. The perfume was spread, but it was liquid. My hair was wet. This, this was one of the experiences. And the other experience I had, there were two experiences. When there were a lot of people there, they closed it in Luis Gonzaga. When it was a few people, they finished in Andre's house. And none of these times, it was finished in Chico's house. And uh, there were the uh, Chico, this house where he lived, uh, in the living room. He closed all the windows, the doors. He clo he we were there. Chico, my father, Nelson, Bompato, Aunt Adelia, Aunt Carmen, another person I didn't remember myself. He began the session in the dark. Afterwards, he opened the door, entered his room, and left there with two lights. At that time, we didn't have electricity. Flu fluorescent lights that were, weren't there, didn't exist. But these lights were so strong. You saw the light and you didn't see anyone else. It's a light that didn't have luminosity. He put it under my chest, and the other light I went to Aunt Adelia. He provided the pass to everyone, and I would hold this light. It was solid light. I could feel the light. And this light didn't clear the environment. And I was six years old, and I still remember it. He finished providing the pass to everyone. I was the last one. When the, he finished the pass, he took the light from me and, and took it away. And what I ask you is this. Aunt Adelia, this, he, it was, the light was materialized from me. me. My light was solid. It vanished. But I'm sure that wasn't Sheila. 
é, é, it wasn't Sheila, the voice is too strong. When it was Sheila, the voice was uh, smoother, was lighter. This voice came from Chico. Ah, yes, Chico was with the spirit. Maybe it was Publius Lentulus or Emmanuel. So you were healed and you don't know what you were healed from. But this is a heal, right? Chico said many of these people that were living 2,000 years before were reincarnated here. I'm not sure if this was a hint for me, but I remember he thought about it. Yes, Chico would say the town of Pedro Leopoldo was a small Rome. And the last time I saw Chico was in 1959, in January, uh, here in Pedro Leopoldo, yes, here. And he was in the house, was going to move, where Antonio Bano lives today. The house was ready for us to move there. It was a Saturday. And he went there, we prayed, and this was the last time I saw Chico. This was 59. In 82, Eliana lost a child. And she lost her son. And after that, she was very bad. Her only child. And I lived outside. And on the weekends, I would come here with my family. And she would come to my house. One of these times, we talked about Chico, and I said, Eliana, I have never seen Chico again. Oh, on Saturday, he will go to that place, the retirement home. No, Bezerra, Bezerra de Menezes. And I said, oh, my goodness, let's go there so that you can see him. Oh, if I come next Saturday, I'll go with you. But if I don't come, you tell him. I never forget him. Next, the following Saturday, I couldn't come. The other Saturday, he went to my house. And if you knew Liana, you know, she smiled at me. And I said, I know, you forgot to talk to Chico. You don't know what happened, she told me. There was a multitude of people to talk to Chico. I was upset and I decided to come home. And I was leaving, so, uh, a sir told me, who is Dona, who is Bizeliana? Chico wants to talk to you. And, sh and then she went there and she was telling me this story. When I saw Chico, I didn't remember you. I didn't remember anything else. I started crying and crying. He told me many things. When he finished, he got this book, gave me and said, Tell José Estacchio I didn't forget him. Oh, my goodness. You see, it is psychographed. Oh, I mean, he autographed the book. What book is it? Jesus in Our Homes. This is beautiful. 2,000 years ago, huh? There are 2,000 years of stories here. Yeah. What a such experience. And I would like to say thank you and to say thank of this life. Because I am talking stories through the people who made me, my parents, my sister, my brothers. This is something super meaningful for me. Oh, great, wonderful. I think he was part of that group that Chico guided, that group that disincarnated, and they were seen by Dr. Romulo. Ah, yes, that hospital they put together to help people that who died in the war. I ask where I came from. I imagine I was one of those people. I had an internship here later and I had the opportunity to come here and to find this house. So that we do not have any questions that reincarnation exists. 
about 98-99 I went to Europe many times and one of those times I went to Germany Berlin, Hamburg and Dresden oh my goodness yeah those places uh, as if I lived there I was director of a company I mean, the director of the company I worked there, they didn't believe how I knew how to go to places. Yeah, these are the memories we have. Andre Luiz, in his book, In the Domains of Mediumship, there's a chapter where, where he talks about it. Sometimes there's a shock the neurological shock doesn't eliminate these memories. When you said thank you to your family, you could overcome that trauma. Yes, 2,000 years ago, my father was Flaminio Severo. Do you know who Flaminio Severo was? The book, 2,000 years ago, in the beginning, Flamilio Severus and Publius Lentulus are talking. And my older brother, who was my older brother, I ask you? He is André de Giora's son, Saul. So, and Lindolfo was André de Oras. My brother, when he came here, he was protected by Lindolfo. He was under his wing, as our son would be. Yeah, there's an account of Arnaldo talking about Lindolfo being this character in the book. And Dr. Romulo built Luis Gonzaga with his help. And then we used to say, we used to joke, they are dealing with things from the past. They will solve these matters in a moment. Yeah, that's true. Well, we are chatting here and we could be here for a long time. But I ask you, if you would like to say, to say anything to wrap it up, you are free to do so. I only would like to say how I appreciate Jesus. Would you like to say something else? I see that you would like to say something. Chico being born in Pedro Leopoldo was a blessing for all of us who made lots of mistakes in the past. And through Chico, we could reconsider many things. And I say thank you that I am a spiritist. Because losing a child without knowing all of these, without having solace from religion, it would be so difficult. And I owe my father, I owe Chico Xavier, and I owe Jesus as well. But we have such a responsibility when we know these things. Because when we get to the other side, they will tell us you knew all of this and you didn't do anything. It's such a responsibility. Yes, I think these opportunities we have. I was happy to be born where I was born. In Villa Operaria. And there, it was a very interesting community where people were close to each other. And we were neighbors with Miss Dahlia. And Miss Dahlia is the one who chose my name when I reincarnated in this life. And she said that I should have Eustachio under my name because of the father that helped bring me to the world. And I saw a message from Padre Eustachio in a book. And then we built a friendship until we got to a place where we should be from the first time. So I talked to Dalia, Dalia talked to Chico, and she told us that we should come here to work. 
but that I should join the group that work on a Thursday. And I said, okay, if Chico said so, I need to go. So when I got here in this, at this door, they told me to be here at 15 to 8. So I went there punctually. And when I got there, Major said, oh, my goodness, you got here too late. And I said, no, but I'm here on time. And he is complaining. Later, I understood that I was second generation in the house. And I have lived with all his friends of Chico. And I had such valuable experiences, especially with Major, that initiated us in the mediumship. And he was the one who received me. Chico used to spend Christmas in Uberaba. And he would come here for New Eve's. And then we had this opportunity to grow with him. Did you go there, Miss Marta? Yeah, I would go there a lot. Yes, lots of opportunities to be with Chico. He would serve uh, coffee and milk and bread and butter. And there were people who played the guitar. And then we would like to be with Chico a lot. And then we had coffee or in Miss Luisa's house or Miss Dahlia's house. And then I could have the opportunity to be in touch with him. So this is it. You can say goodbye. Let's wrap it up this round table so that we can finish this round table, this talk that was so nice, and we could talk about Time to Heal with Chico Xavier. I would like to say thank you for the opportunity for having me. I'm super honored with this opportunity. It was excellent. I really love this gathering here with you, this exchange of stories. Thank you so much. I also say thank you. I'm super happy with the invite. I'm super happy to be here as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't deserve it. No, we say thank you for you being here. Thank you so much. We really need to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be in touch with these people. Despite being through videos, but we are super happy to be in this world meeting with Chico Xavier's friends. This is a unique opportunity to be here gathered, remembering these stories that we had with our beloved Chico Xavier. We could have taken more advantage of it, but now let's repeat the stories and let's continue. Yeah, that's for sure. If we would tell all the stories you know, we would be here forever. Yes, uh, that's it. But we are so grateful for Chico and for all the ones that brought this beautiful doctrine with Chico. And this doctrine makes us safe. They comfort us in our pains and give us solace. And for everyone who are here listening to us, we should be sure there's a God, Jesus, our master, is the governor of our planet Earth. And our spiritual friends that are supporting us, regardless of our religion, regardless any feeling we may have, the, the kindness in God is will be always there for us, supporting us in our evolution, and we will be there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chico. I think that now that we are here, we should highlight the most important thing we got from Chico, which is unconditional love. Chico had donated himself for all of us, for all humanity, and his great tolerance and patience with 
every creature. He was persecuted and he was only unconditional lo love. And all the blessings that Emmanuel and Ismael sent us and all the greatest Maria's blessings as well and they are supporting us and we are we have the dignity we are dignified to have the support through Chico thank you so much okay this is it our chat was beautiful we did it a la Chico if he would be here he would be laughing with us we only we didn't have the snack, and the snack from Minas was something sacred. Yeah, that's for sure. Chico must be laughing with us, uh, laughing with us of this reminiscence that are so careful for us. And it is such a joy to talk about Chico. This day is dedicated to the town of Pedro Leopoldo. We have representatives of Luis Gonzaga Spiritist Center.